To the uninitiated, the Sega Genesis was a system with a ton of sports games and, of course, Sonic. For those in the know, however, the Sega Genesis has an awesome library of games spanning every genre. On today's episode, we are going to take a look at five great Sega Genesis games, which are neither sports games nor feature Sonic the Hedgehog. Come on! We begin our journey with the American-developed Comic Zone, released in 1995. Our main protagonist is a comic book artist named Sketch. On a stormy night in New York City, lightning strikes and he is transported into his newly created book, while the villain is transported into the real world. Sketch then has to traverse the pages of his book to take out the enemy. Comic Zone's combat feels like a beat-em-up, with a simple button layout achieving complex moves based on the situation. However, your movement is limited to a single plane, like a traditional action game. What makes Comic Zone so unique is the presentation. Each level is a page of the comic book, and you'll clear different panels to progress. Along the way, you can collect and use up to three sub-items as well. The most useful is your pet rat, who can flip out-of-reach switches as well as attack foes. The controls are terrific, with responsive attacks and a predictable jump, but are made more satisfying with all the action words and sound effects when landing hits. Comic Zone does an awesome job feeling like a comic book. In addition to the action words and speech bubbles, the overall graphic styles feels like a 90s comic, with awesome detail, an oversaturated color palette, and terrific enemies. Finally, the grungy, guitar-heavy soundtrack is fantastic. The compositions change from laid-back to fast-paced and do a wonderful job capturing the Genesis sound. Comic Zone plays well, looks great, and sounds even better, and belongs in every Genesis collection. It would be tough to list great Sega Genesis titles without mentioning Treasure's 1993 hit, Gunstar Heroes. Created by former Konami employees, Gunstar Heroes plays a bit like the Contra series of games, but with plenty of unique gimmicks and charm to make it stand out on its own. Gunstar Heroes plays like a traditional run-and-gun. Move right, shoot. Move right, jump. Simple stuff. However, the weapon system is unique. There are four weapons total, but you can mix and match up to two at a time. So, if you collect a chaser and the laser, you now have a chasing laser. There are some basic combat moves as well, allowing you to toss enemies and even do a belly flop. The stages also have a ton of variety, from lush greenery to industrial themes and even completely different gameplay gimmicks like an anti-gravity minecart level and a board game where you toss dice. More impressive are the graphics. Gunstar Heroes moves at a breathtaking pace, with constant action, bullets, and explosions almost always on the screen without any slowdown. Gunstar Heroes is a relentless assault to all of your senses. Gunstar Heroes' crowning achievement are the bosses, which are frequent and varied. These things are huge, well animated, and generally require different tactics to take down. These guys will change the way you look at video game bosses. Above all else, Gunstar Heroes is an absolute blast. The responsive controls are irresistible, the challenge is fair, and there are unlimited continues to assure gamers of all skill levels can see this one through to the end. And you should, because Gunstar Heroes is a classic. Many consider 1992's Streets of Rage 2 to be the finest beat-em-up of all time. To be honest with you, they just might be right. By their very nature, beat-em-ups are simple, repetitive games. You simply punch and kick your way through hordes of enemies. Streets of Rage 2 manages to take a simple, archaic concept and transform it into a memorable game. First, the controls are amazing. Your character is responsive and the hit detection with the enemies feels terrific. Besides the special move, which drains a bit of your health, you have just two buttons to contend with, jump and attack. This simplicity makes the game immediately accessible to anyone. Despite just a single attack button, you have a wide array of moves at your disposal, accomplished by long and short presses of the action button, air attacks after jumping, and holding maneuvers if you grapple your foe. It all makes for an extremely smooth and satisfying experience. If this wasn't enough, Streets of Rage 2 has excellent visuals. This adds to the variety and helps eliminate the repetition problem. As our heroes make their way from the streets to the Syndicate Tower, you are going to traverse through a ton of different environments, and each is as detailed as the last. From the streets to a pirate-themed bar to a baseball field and even an alien stronghold, Streets of Rage 2 never disappoints. 
Finally, there is the soundtrack. If there was ever a game to showcase the audio capabilities of the Genesis, this is it. The upbeat techno-inspired tracks utilize a huge variety of instruments, and they all sound fantastic. The compositions are way ahead of their time, and again make repeat playthroughs an absolute treat. Streets of Rage 2 isn't just a great beat-em-up, it's a great game, period. Sega's Virtual Racing was released on the Genesis in 1994, and was the only Genesis cartridge to feature the Sega Virtual Processor Enhancement chip. This chip allows for full 3D polygon graphics at a surprisingly brisk frame rate. All of this high-tech wizardry wouldn't mean much if it wasn't used to push video games forward. This is exactly what Sega's Virtual Racing did. While this certainly fails in comparison to the arcade original, the Genesis port is still a great title. First off, the controls are excellent. Not only are they responsive, free of any leg whatsoever, they are deep and do a nice job conveying grip. You can feel the grip of your front tires, allowing you to navigate turns, and you can feel the grip of your rear tires, letting you know when they have reached their limits so you can let off the accelerator. It blows me away this level of precision is available on a Genesis cartridge. The Sublime controls are matched with some truly outstanding tracks. As I've said many times before, good track design is all about flow. How the exit of one corner complements the entry of another is what it's all about. Virtual Racing excels in this area, with three courses that have withstood the test of time. What brings this all together is Sega's secret sauce, style. Every checkpoint is celebrated with a catchy jingle and even an announcer. Even a game over is over the top. Virtual Racing is often looked at for its technical achievements, but make no mistake about it, this is one of the greatest racing games ever to grace 16-bit hardware. Last but not least is Castlevania Bloodlines. This was actually my entry point into the entire series, and with more Castlevania titles under my belt, I've developed a deeper appreciation for how great this game truly is. First, you have the choice between two characters. John Morris is the traditional vampire hunter, sporting the Belmont's famous whip. While on the ground, you are limited to whipping left and right, like the classic NES games. However, when you jump, you can whip diagonally as well as downward. Lastly, John can use the whip to swing across platforms. The second playable character is Eric Lacard. Rather than a whip, he has the Alucard Spear. The spear can be used in multiple directions while on the ground, but has a limited range of motion while jumping, the exact opposite of John. Additionally, the spear can be used to do a pole vault jump. The reason I bring up all the little intricacies with the gameplay mechanics is because Bloodlines has developed a reputation for being somewhat limited, and this couldn't be further from the truth. The minor limitations of the whip and the spear make the special items much more useful. Not only that, each special item has a secondary attack, increasing their versatility. The increased diversity of item usage makes Bloodlines an immensely satisfying experience. Next is the soundtrack. Castlevania Bloodlines has one of the most memorable video game soundtracks of all time. The compositions are catchy, yet haunting, utilizing the perfect mix of pianos, organs, and synthesized instruments. The level of energy is terrific, and these complex arrangements really push the limits of the Genesis sound hardware. The graphics follow suit, with Konami using all of the Genesis tricks to simulate transparencies and rotation effects. The set pieces are all impressive and do a great job capturing the feel of Europe at the turn of the century. Above all else, Castlevania Bloodlines is just a ton of fun to play. The weapons and items are all fun to use, the boss fights are memorable, the jump arc is predictable, and the game has an unmatched level of polish. This one is a masterpiece and a must-own for all retro gamers. So, there you have it. Five great games released on the Sega Genesis. Now, this is not a definitive list, nor is it intended to be a best of, and the Genesis has far more than five great games, so be sure to leave a comment and let me know which Genesis games you enjoy.